For different subjects, certain study strategies work better than others. In this video, we will cover the study strategies that have been found to work best for specific subjects. Chemistry. Learn the material in small chunks. There may seem to be an overwhelming amount of material, and students have a tendency to go over all the material a few times. With so much information, very little is really learned even after several repetitions. Repeat little chunks of information many times. Work the material without looking back at the chapter. Many students have a tendency to read a problem, find the relevant section in the book, take the approach the author used and apply it to their problem, quickly write down an answer and think that they are done. Work through a few problems independently, then check the textbook for further information. Practice daily. Your textbook, discussion sections, and lectures provide many problems and materials for review. Use them. Practice chemistry every day to ensure material is memorized in the long term. Find a study group. Use study groups to practice your knowledge. Try and explain topics to your discussion group, but also remember to listen. Having a study group is a valuable resource to learn and teach. Take homework seriously. Classes like Chemistry 109 appear to be exam heavy, but the homework is an important component. Take chemistry seriously every day and do your best on the homework. Getting a good homework score will be the difference between letter grades. Calculus. One, prepare for exams by working on new problems. Good sources for these problems are unassigned problems from your textbook, review exercises, and practice exams at the end of each chapter, old hour exams, or old final exams. Studying exclusively from those problems which you have already been assigned and worked on may not be effective exam preparation. Problems for each topic are generally in the same section of the book, so knowing how to do a problem because you know what section of the book it is in could give you a false sense of security. Two, learn to classify problems. When you come to a new problem, mentally note what concepts this problem covers, what chapters and pages may be helpful, and what skills it ties in from previous units. Three, keep a running list of every concept taught in the course. Create an index at the beginning of your notebook. Star concepts that you are not sure of, or which you need to review in the index. If you really want to go above and beyond, note which page numbers the concepts are covered in your textbook. Four, seek help. The university provides a multitude of help for students in calculus. The math lab is an excellent resource for completing homework. Five, find practice tests. The math department does an excellent job providing previous math exams on their website. Find calculus exams for each midterm and take them. One of the main reasons students do not score as high in calculus exams is their inability to finish the exam on time. Learn to pace yourself on practice exams similar to those given in class. Six, math is reversible. All things in math can be undone. Practice problems provide valuable information which can be twisted and manipulated to review concepts. Construct a polynomial, find its derivative, take its integral, and graph the original polynomial. You can create simple problems and review multiple concepts. Statistics. One, read carefully and deliberately. The way in which you should read in statistics is quite different from the way you may read a history book, a newspaper, or a novel. In statistics, you must read slowly, absorbing each word. It is sometimes necessary to read a textbook discussion or problem many times before it begins to make sense to you. Two, have a pencil and scratch paper nearby. Always have a pencil in hand and scratch paper ready to use when you read and study statistics. 
test out the ideas on paper that the authors are discussing. When they propose a question, try to answer it before going on. Even though an example may be worked out completely in the text, work it out for yourself on scratch paper also. 3. Learn what to memorize and infer the rest. Do not try to learn statistics by memorizing illustrative examples. You will soon become overwhelmed by this approach, and the further you go, the less successful you will be. The field of statistics is based on a surprisingly small number of fundamental principles and definitions. Most of these must be memorized. 4. Be neat and accurate. Keep your work organized. Have a special section in your notebook for statistics. Keep each assignment, along with old tests, notes, etc., in a centrally located place so that you can refer to them when necessary. 5. Create note sheets. Build up vocab lists and annotated formula sheets as you go along to act as a ready reference guide when you are reading and trying to do problems. 6. Ask yourself the following questions when solving problems. Do I understand the question? Read the question slowly. Disregard or cross out extra information meant to trick you. What homework questions and quiz questions does this question relate to? What have I done? What concepts have I used? Does the answer make sense? Is the answer correctly labeled? Did you actually answer the question? Can you explain your answer? What concepts have you used? 7. Use online resources. You are not obligated to use the same statistics book. In fact, you have many, many options. Many colleges provide free online statistics books. Stanford and the University of Arizona are two options to consider. If something isn't making sense in your course textbook, try an alternative online. Biology, Botany, Zoology 1. Focus on the diagrams. Your professor will not test you on the entire chapter, especially if it is an introductory class. The pictures and diagrams are a great way to guide your focus as you read through dense chapters. 2. Label diagrams in class. If a picture is used multiple times in the same chapter, it's probably important. You may want to photocopy the picture and bring it with you to class, or maybe find a similar picture online and print it out. Labeling a picture may be easier than trying to draw it in your notes. However, this strategy may not be appropriate. It depends on the class and the instructor. 3. Rewrite your notes. This is time consuming, but does two things. It gives you a chance to review what you covered in class and make sure you didn't miss anything. It also gives you a well-organized set of notes to study for the test. 4. Use online resources. Find online resources that cover the same information. Try typing the topic and the word tutorial or quiz into a search engine. I recommend using google.com. It is a very comprehensive search engine. Google also has an image library that you can search for pictures of bacteria, mussels, flowers, or whatever you're looking for. 5. Test yourself. Write your own test. If you had 20 or 50 or 100 questions that you could ask about this information, what would you ask? What topics are the most important? How would you ask questions about each of these topics? Knowing what will be on the test is a difficult skill but with practice, you should be able to figure it out. 6. Draw your material. Draw, trace, or photocopy a picture of the process from your book. Write the vocabulary words that relate to the process on another sheet of paper. Be able to put the right term in the right place on the picture. Now try to label the picture without the terms in front of you. Now look at the list of vocabulary words. Put the words in order and draw the picture. Color code the different steps of the process. Now take a blank sheet of paper and draw the picture from scratch. Without any words in front of you, label the picture you have drawn. 
Now take a blank sheet of paper and draw the process backwards. Economics 1. Create charts. Economics is a series of patterns and trends. Use charts to widen your understanding. If one variable changes, what happens to related variables? For instance, if wages rise, how might the money supply, inflation, and interest rates change? 2. Use online resources. If your professor utilizes an online platform for homework, check out if the website offers practice problem sets. These practice sets will mimic graded homework and decrease errors on real graded sets. 3. Read the textbook. The textbook is very important in economics. Economics without context is a series of formulas, relationships, and patterns. The textbook will provide context to major economic principles. It will feel more intuitive and be easier to learn. 4. Utilize office hours. Try working on homework sets in office hours. Classes like Econ 101 and 102 often have very full office hours. It will not seem out of place to work through your problem sets while others ask questions. You will be able to solve problems and have your own questions answered through others' efforts. 5. Register for tutoring. The most valuable thing you can get out of tutoring is not your tutor, it is your peers. Don't be afraid to reach out to your fellow 2Ds if you're stuck on a problem. Ask to compare problem sets or study together. Sociology slash psychology. Number one, show up for class. Lectures tend to be more important than the textbook. Psychology classes often cover a wide range of materials, and class gives you a good idea of what is testable material. Two, focus on absorbing material, not writing it down. Find what your professor puts online. If your professor doesn't post slides, take thorough notes. Otherwise, just highlight the main points and enjoy the lecture. Think critically about what materials your professor highlighted and jot down notes about these topics. Three, review your notes. Think critically about what materials your professor highlighted in lecture and focus on these topics when reviewing. Try rewriting your notes or jot down anecdotes that relate the class material to your own life. Four, Write your own multiple choice tests. Most psychology tests are multiple choice, so learn how to recognize what answers seem unreasonable or made up. The best way to do this is by tricking yourself, like you imagine a professor would. Five, supplement lectures with online resources. If you want a fun way to review, listen to podcasts or YouTube videos on the way to class. Sociology and psychology classes have some of the most interesting material, and there is a plethora of online material for your browsing. Foreign Languages and ESL 1. Focus on vocab and spelling, then work on grammar. Foreign language classes can be misleading. It's easy to want to master the grammatical structures and not focus on spelling. Unfortunately, most foreign language classes have some writing component. Writing words repeatedly on a whiteboard is a good way to master trickier spellings. 2. Don't fall behind. Language builds. If you find yourself not understanding class material correctly, catching up should be one of your first priorities. All material and language is interconnected, and it's pivotal that you do not fall behind. Use your professor's office hours or use online resources like Duolingo. Three, speak up in class. Speaking is learning. The best way to learn foreign language is through practice. And what a better way than by speaking. Use class time to answer questions and get comfortable with the material. Four, find a native speaker. There will be many things that you cannot learn in class alone. And perfecting an accent is one of those. Find a native speaker and work on your conversational skills. The benefits of your improved study will carry into class. 5. Record yourself. If you have an oral presentation coming up, 
there is no better way to improve your speech and build confidence than by recording yourself. Have you ever cringed at hearing yourself in the microphone or on camera? We are often more critical of ourselves than others. If you can stand to listen to yourself, you can definitely do well in front of others. Thank you for watching. If you have more questions about study tips, please visit guts.wisc.edu and make an appointment with one of our study skills coordinators. Thank you.